So we introduced the concept of the limit definition of the derivative in the previous video. So today's video is just going to be a focus on doing a couple of limit definition of derivative problems. And starting out, our first problem is going to be, we have the function f of x is equal to 4x. And this is going to be a pretty simple problem. It's just going to be a little bit of a warm up. And what it is that we want to do in order to take the derivative of this function is we want to take the, the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus an infinitely small increase in x, which is going to be denoted as h, subtract off your initial function, all that divided by h. So let's go and start by defining all of the terms that we have. So right now our f of x is 4x. So in order to define our f of x plus h, all we need to do is we need to plug in x plus h wherever it is that we see x in the initial function. So in this case, f of x plus h is just 4x plus h, or 4 open bracket x plus h. Substitute x plus h wherever it is that you see x. Afterward, you're going to have to distribute it, so it's going to become 4x plus 4h, and that is our f of x plus h. We want to subtract off the initial function, which is f of x is equal to 4x, then divide the entire thing by h and take the limit as h approaches 0. So we're going to plug and chug everything into their place. f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Our f of x plus h is 4x plus 4h. So we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0 for 4x plus 4h minus, and then our f of x, which is 4x, over h. We notice that we have some common factors that can be cancelled out in the numerator, the negative 4x with the positive 4x, so all we'll be left with is the limit as h approaches 0 for 4h over h. And in 100% of cases, you will always have an h in the numerator that can be factored out and cancelled with an h in the denominator. Otherwise, you're going to end up dividing by 0. That's not allowed. So what we're doing is cancelling out this h with this h, and we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0. However, the limit as h approaches 0 for just 4 is equal to 4. So the derivative of the function 4x is simply equal to 4. And if we think back to the previous video where we had discussed what a derivative was, essentially it's the slope of a line at any given point on a graph, and we know that the function's slope is going to be 4 at any given point on that graph, and that's because it is a linear curve. 4x is a linear graph, and the slope of the linear graph will always be given by the coefficient that's attached to the x. However, the steps for these problems are pretty robotic. There's really nothing new to them. All you need to do is define your f of x plus h, subtract off your initial function, divide the entire thing by h, and then take the limit as h approaches 0. It doesn't really change from problem to problem, other than maybe multiplying by the conjugate or finding common fractions. Other than that, it's pretty easy stuff. So say we have the function f of x is equal to 3x squared plus x. What we want to do now is we want to define our f of x plus h first. So what we'll do is we'll write out f of x plus h, and wherever it is that we see x in this function, we're going to substitute it with x plus h. So 3 times x plus h squared plus x plus h. Now this is going to require a little bit of distribution, so I'm going to distribute that right now our f of x plus h is equal to 3 times, this will be distributed, this will be squared, so this is going to be 3, x, this is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h, all in brackets, distribute the 3, this is going to become this will become a 3x squared, this will become a 6xh, and this will become a 3h squared. So now we have our f of x plus h term, we already have our f of x, so all we need to do is we subtract off f of x from f of x plus h. So it is 3x squared, now let's see if we can combine any like terms, in this case we cannot, so all we are going to be left with is f of x plus h is equal to Let's take the limit as h approaches 0 for 3x squared 
plus 6xh plus h squared plus x plus h. Subtract off our initial function, which is 3x squared plus x minus 3x squared plus x. You need to be very careful with the brackets. You are subtracting off the entire function. So this is going to become a negative 3x squared, and this will become a negative x. All over h. Now we can cancel out some common factors. We have a negative x over here, a positive x over here, positive 3x squared over here, negative 3x squared over here. All we will be left with is the limit as h approaches 0 for 6xh plus h squared plus h all over h. Now what we can do in this case is pull an h out of the numerator by factoring. So we'll take the limit as h approaches 0 for h times, and let's be careful with this because I always mess up my factoring, 6x plus 1 over h. Cancel out the h with the numerator and the denominator. And then we take the limit as h approaches 0 for whatever is left over after the h has been cancelled out. So we want to take the limit as h approaches 0 for 6x plus h plus 1. We know that this h term is going to disappear, go straight to 0. So all we will be left with is 6x plus 1. So the slope at any given point on that graph can be dictated by this function right over here by plugging x into that function. So if we wanted to find the slope at x is equal to 2, plug x is equal to 2 in this function, it'll tell you the slope is equal to, what is this, it'll come to 13. If you wanted it at x equals 5, it'll give you 31. Now what we'll do is take one last example that involves distributions and powers. So we have f of x is equal to 4x to the third. So we want to find the derivative of 4x to the third. So let's start out by defining our f of x plus h. Wherever it is that you see x, simply substitute it with x plus h. So 4 times x plus h to the third. And now we'll have to make some distributions before it is that we can plug it into the formula. So what we'll do is we'll cube this first. So f of x plus h is equal to 4 multiplied by this whole thing cubed, which is x to the third plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h to the third. Distribute that even further. Put all of the 4s in there. We will be left with 4x to the third plus 12x squared h plus 12x h squared plus 4h to the third. Now we have our f of x plus h. We can subtract off our initial function and then divide everything by h. So what we want to do is take the limit as h approaches 0 for this whole mess, subtracting off the initial function. So 4x to the third plus 12x squared h plus 12x h squared plus 4h to the third. Subtracting off the initial function, open your brackets. Our initial function is just 4x to the third. So all we're left with is we can cross out these common terms right over here. And don't forget to divide this entire thing by h. So we cross out the 4x to the third. We'll be left with the limit as h approaches 0 for 12x squared h plus 12x h squared plus 4h to the third over h. Once again, we can factor an h out of the numerator. So we'll take the limit as h approaches 0. Before we factor out an h, we'll be left with 12x squared plus 12xh plus 4h squared over h. Cancel the h with the numerator and the denominator. And all we will be left with is, let's just clean this up right over here. 
all we're left with is the limit as h approaches 0 for whatever is left. So we want to take the limit as h approaches 0 for 12x squared plus 12xh plus 4h squared. The limit as h approaches 0, anything that's multiplied by h will disappear. So this will go straight to 0, this will go straight to 0. All we are left with is 12x squared. So the derivative of this function is 12x squared. Now let's do an example with a square root. And then afterwards we'll do a quotient and we'll call it a day. So we want to find the derivative of the function, the square root, right? f of x is equal to the square root of 3x plus 7. The steps don't change. Wherever it is that you see an x, substitute in x plus h. So f prime, no wait, f of x plus h is equal to the square root of 3 times x plus h plus 7. We can clean this up and call it the square root of 3x plus 3h plus 7. And we want to subtract off our initial function, which is just the square root of 3x plus 7. So we'll take the limit as h approaches 0 for the square root of 3x plus 3h plus 7 minus the square root of 3x plus 7 all over h. And as we did in other limit evaluation videos, in this case we have to multiply by the conjugate. So we will be multiplying this by the conjugate of the numerator, which is 3x plus 3h plus 7. See this is a minus sign, this has to become a plus. 3x plus 7 over the exact same thing in the denominator. This is multiplying by 1 in a very special way so that you do not change the value of the function. Plus 3x plus 7. So what we'll be left with is the numerator is going to distribute very nicely. So we'll take the limit as h approaches 0 for whatever the numerator becomes, which is 3x plus 3h plus 7 minus 3x plus 7. over h multiplied by this mess right over here. 3x plus 3h plus 7 plus the square root of 3x plus 7. So now we can cancel out common factors in the numerator to begin with. Here we have a positive 3x, a negative 3x, a positive 7x, and a negative 7x. So all we'll be left with is the limit as h approaches 0 for 3h divided by h times the square root of 3x plus 3h plus 7 plus the square root of 3x plus 7. And in this case we have an h in the numerator and the denominator that are common factors and can be cancelled out with each other. So we'll cancel those out. And let's just finish this up on this side because I'm running out of space. All we'll be left with is the limit as h approaches 0. Now we want to take the limit as h approaches 0 for 3 divided by the square root of 3x plus 3h plus 7 plus the square root of 3x plus 7. And we don't have any problem with the denominator anymore. If we were to try to divide by h to begin with, we would have been left with a 0 in the denominator. But because it is that we multiplied by the conjugate, we don't have any more issues in the denominator. If we let h approach 0, this would go straight to 0, but the rest would still be left there. So if we take the limit as h approaches 0, we will be left with 3 over the square root 
of 3x plus 7 plus the square root of 3x plus 7, which is basically this multiplied by 2. So this can become 3 over 2 times the square root of 3x plus 7. And that is the, that is the derivative of our, of our initial function.